I have two kind of disparate issues I wanted to cover with you. you uh, one, uh, uh, last November, we had a short conversation about what I was hoping to be perhaps the next step in breaking down the discrimination against people with disabilities in our country. And that was allowing people with disabilities to serve in our armed forces. We had a unique case of a young man who had gone through ROTC uh, in California, had done extremely well in all of his tests, all of his scores and stuff, but was denied entry uh, into the military because he was deaf. And I explored with you at that time perhaps having a pilot program of bringing people in to the military uh, who, who could add to the defense of this country. I just think this is one place where Again, we've got to break down some of these barriers. There's a lot of people with disabilities that want to serve their country, can serve in the Air Force, Army, Navy, Marines. They may not be able to do exactly everything that people can do, but they can do within, the, within their abilities. They can provide a lot of support. And, and I just ask you, please, once again, to really take a look at this and set up a pilot program. I, I appreciate uh your, your leadership on this issue. Uh, you, you've been, you've, you've led on this issue for a long time uh, during your career here on, on the Hill, and I, I really, I respect it. But more importantly, I agree with you. Uh, and for that reason, uh, you know, I think we can uh, try to set up a pilot program. I mean, look, right now, when, it's, when we have wounded warriors, yeah, and let me tell you, wounded warriors come out of there uh, with, uh, with new legs, new arms, and sometimes they, they're back at duty. Uh, and they're doing the job, and they're doing it well. Exactly. So if, if we can do it for wounded warriors, I think we can reach out and do it for others as well that can be part of it. So uh, you have my assurance we'll, we'll get something. I appreciate especially done. looking at some of these young people that are coming through uh, schools right now and stuff who have a lot of abilities and, and want to serve. That was one. The second one had to do with another issue that I briefly raised with you um, in Afghanistan. The Department of Defense has been involved in a program of spurring uh, uh, small businesses uh, in, in, in Afghanistan, obviously to get people off of the, the drug business and stuff. And one of that was in the carpet industry. Um, the Afghan law, there's an Afghan labor law, there's a U.S. law, there's ILO Convention 182 about child labor, about using child labor in this thing. Uh, we ask that you work with the Department of Labor, our Department of Labor, on this to incorporate, to use a, a, an NGO in terms of monitoring this and setting up a, an inspection system, an independent third-party inspection and verification system to make sure that no U.S. taxpayers' dollars are used to support businesses that employ children in the worst forms of child labor. Uh, now, we've had some... Uh, we've had some progress in that, but as we tend now, as we're going to turn this over to them, we're not setting up a mandatory verification system, and that bothers me. So, in other words, we were kind of doing a pretty good job, but now that we're handing it over in our agreement, we're not making an agreement to make sure that they adhere to the independent third-party verification system uh, there. To, to me, this is just, again, one of those areas where we can do a lot of good while also supporting uh, an industry in, in Afghanistan. And again, I would ask you to, to look at those contracts that we have to safeguard that verification in that third party uh, verification system in Afghanistan. 